Okay, so it looks like we got some pretty shocking reporting here about Kamala's VP. There's a sweepstakes going on about Kamala's vice president and who is going to be chosen. Uh, currently, the names appear to be Shapiro, Walls, Bashir, and Kelly seem to be kind of the main people who are in the race. I think Buttigieg was considered a, 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 a dark horse candidate and Coop already dropped out, so he's not even in the race anymore. Uh, it seems like the betting markets are clearly saying that Shapiro is going to lead. Uh, but there's some pretty interesting like reporting. This is the first reporting I've seen in a while that gives us some copium. And there's actually two pieces and two heavily unexpected people that you likely would not have expected. And some really interesting stuff. So make sure to stay tuned to hear who that is. But uh, this article says House Democrats hone in on Tim Walls for Harris ticket. And so you're going to see somebody really, really shocking is actually kind of nudging in Walls' favor. And uh, they also did something pretty crazy with respect to the old guy, right? So... Um, this article says, you know, as Vice President Harris weighs her choice for running mate, House Democrats are increasingly advocating for a former colleague, Minnesota Governor Tom, Tim Walls. First elected to Congress in 2006, Walls served in the House for 12 years and rose to become the top Democrat on the powerful Veterans Affairs Committee before heading home in 2019 to lead the North Star State. So uh, also, this is why AOC doesn't have any power, by the way. It's simply on the grounds that in order to have power in uh, Congress, you need to be on committees because committees are where legislation is started and where it actually gets out before it goes to the floor. Um I believe it's supposed to be the amicable. amicable. The amicable Walsh was not only popular on Capitol Hill, but he also had the distinction of being the highest ranking enlisted soldier in the history of Congress. I didn't actually know that. That's pretty crazy. A status that endeared him to Pentagon sports in both parties. And I think that could really contribute to potential walls like a uh, crossover appeal with moderates and Republicans is his military background. But you can really tell from his vibe, like he's kind of like that dude. Uh, like he a real one. You know what I mean? He's kind of like a real one. Uh, and so you can tell. Um... And so it says that unique resume combined with his Midwestern roots, liberal policy record and fierce defense of the Biden administration on the campaign trail this year have made him a top prospect among a growing list of Democrats on Capitol Hill who said he'd be a strong asset to the Democratic ticket as Harris vies to keep former President Trump from a second term in the White House. Uh, quote, my sentimental favorite is Tim Walz, said Rep. Jim McGovern, the top Democrat on the powerful rules committee. He was a great member of Congress. The people I know in Minnesota tell me he's a great governor, but more importantly, he's a good guy. He's down to earth. He's the real deal. There's nothing phony about him, and he calls him uh, as he sees him, and he tells it like it is, and I appreciate the candor. So this, normally, if someone said this about someone, I'd be like, oh, what does that even mean? Like, you're just saying he's a good guy. Where are his policies? But I think in this race, it's big because obviously you're running against Trump, who's like a really dishonest, like, serial liar. Uh, but also it just seems to be true this, and you're going to see this from another people reporting that we're going to talk about. This seems to be a common theme for, uh, for walls where it's like a very common opinion held about walls. And this says, uh, representative Pramila Jayapal, who's obviously a progressive head of the congressional progressive caucus also singled out walls as a particularly appealing vice presidential pick. Uh, she pointed to walls track record, backing labor unions and working families as a key for her support. Uh, I want somebody who's really strongly pro-labor and understands labor because this is a big part of the working class agenda and making sure that we win working class votes, Jai Paul said. Um, I want somebody who's totally committed to the agenda that Joe Biden and Kamala Harris fought for. And then I think it should be somebody who's really good in some of our Midwestern states. So making sure that we win Wisconsin, Ohio, some of those places. And so that kind of brings me to, I really like Governor Wall, she continued. I like the things that he's been able to do. I like that he's from a rural town. I like that he's got a military background, so he'd be a great choice. And then next, the article talks about how Bernie Sanders is supporting him. Psych! It's fucking Nancy Pelosi. Nancy fucking Pelosi. Repeat, Nancy Pelosi. So it says, even former Speaker Nancy Pelosi, Democrat California, appears to be leaning in Walls' favor. What the fuck? A source familiar with the California Democrats think he told The Hill she, quote, is always especially fond of former House colleagues when asked by Harris's running mate, a nod to Walls. So this is crazy. Fucking Nancy Pelosi. And if you don't know, it appears like the, the move to ouster Biden was a team effort from everybody involved. But it looks like there was some kind of good cop, bad cop going on. Some people kind of played the mid-central role. Um, I think Hakeem Jeffries kind of did that where he would just say, oh, hey, I'm just expressing the concerns of my caucus. Publicly, they would say they still supported him. Uh, from the reporting that I've read, it appears that Chuck Schumer behind the scenes was kind of like the good cop. He's a hey man. Like he was, I read reports that they were having like really intimate conversations at, at, at Biden's home and they're really having like very deep conversations. But then the reporting I've heard read from Nancy Pelosi was like, holy shit. She was like, if this is the last thing I do, 
you're going down no matter what. So it looks like Nancy Pelosi is the one who really big daddy Biden out. So a lot of progressives like, whoa, because there were a lot of people who were like, even a K Hivers or whatever saying like, no, don't replace Joe Biden or whatever. And so it's kind of a weird dimension to be in where it's like, whoa, like progressives and Nancy Pelosi are just like, what is going on? I don't know if she's like, man, I've been like a corporate Democrat my whole life. My life is coming to an end soon. She's 84, by the way. It's insane how old she is. She's still in the house. Uh, but, uh, you know, Maybe she's trying to be like, I'm trying to get redemption here. You know, I'm trying to be more progressive here in the later times. <laughs> she's trying to wield her powers for good. I don't know if you think that the getting rid of Biden was good if you're progressive. And then the walls thing. Another thing to note here is this is really something big in terms of Bernie Sanders failed to do this exact thing. Bernie Sanders failed to be able to create these relationships with these politicians behind the scenes. So forming a relationship with Jim Clyburn, for example, not necessarily to get him to endorse you, but even just to get him to not endorse your opponent. He failed significantly. He's not a... Uh, He's not like that kind of fun loving guy. He's kind of like a no bullshit serious type of dude. Walls is like a he's a charismatic real type of dude who can do more of that politicking. You know, politicking is super important, almost as important as the actual issues themselves because the issues themselves aren't going to get passed without some good politicking, right? And so uh, we have more reporting on that as well because we have Joe Biden's opinions have been revealed. So um, this was dropped not long ago from when we're recording this. Uh, so it's saying how Biden feels about some of Harris's top candidates uh, for running mate. And so uh, it basically breaks it down. And so pretty much he talks about how he's a big fan of uh, Josh Shapiro. It's his one well-known Biden favorite, Pennsylvania Governor Josh Shapiro. Biden is a, quote, big fan of Shapiro as a senior advisor to the president, told CNN. And given that the president himself frequently traveled to Pennsylvania as a candidate and has made no bones about the fact that he sees the state as one of the most Important battleground states heading into November, just as it was in 2020. For some of the president's advisors, it's hard to imagine him personally rooting for anyone but Shapiro. That is, perhaps anyone other than Minnesota Governor Tim Walz. The most obvious reason? Quote, he's just a blast, this advisor said. This is some really juicy stuff. So, here's what it says. It says, in January, Walls was among a group of Democratic elected officials that joined Biden in an infrastructure event in Superior, Wisconsin. Um... The president's formal remarks were at Earth Rider Brewery. Afterwards, the group made their way over to the Cedar Lounge Tap Room to greet voters, where beers were freely flowing. Walls, the advisor recalled, was having a great time, and it all felt infectious. Quote, Biden was in the best mood ever, this advisor chuckled. And they said that at the time, advisors to the president joked with one another that perhaps the team should find ways to have Walls around Biden more. Quote, because he always puts him in such a great mood. So this is like unanimous. Everybody's saying this dude's a good guy. He's real. I love being around him. He's charismatic. He's funny. He's down to earth. It's like everybody. And so it, it's there's too much smoke for there not to be fire here. Where like there's no way that he's not like this kind of guy who's just like down to earth, kind of messes around. And just to kind of add also to what I said earlier about Bernie not being able to do this kind of politicking game. Uh, Walls, to be clear, is not anywhere near as progressive as Bernie is. Like if if Bernie, if anybody in the and when they did, this did happen. You know, like for example, you know, Walls says healthcare access. If we had healthcare access as a statement and it did happen in the Democratic primary, we fucking pounced hard. Okay, I remember that stuff. So he's nowhere even close to as progressive as Bernie. Not even close. But just in terms of my disappointments with Bernie Saunders is he failed to be able to politic and to be able to play the game. And I think that's not his fault necessarily. And I think that that might be why there might be a different strategy from getting the big progressive things done. It might not be like that super real progressive guy because that guy may not be able to politic because he's such a real person. You know, FDR was more of a, he wasn't an ideologue. He was just kind of like, you know, whatever gives me power, kind of narcissist type of guy. And he's the most progressive person there is. But that was because at the time, the, the desired policies were progressive, right? So that could be another route. But that's obviously dangerous because then you run into the issue of they're able to just kind of get picked up by anybody, right? But this is some uh, copium, if you have it, because clearly by far and away, Shapiro is, is definitely like the the front runner. The betting market's even having that like 69 or 70% chance. But if you need some copium to keep you going, like man, walls and, you know, there's more scandal after scandal coming out. There's just so many scandals. There's now the uh, unearthed article that he wrote when he was 20, where he's basically, in my humble opinion, the way he describes the Palestinians, if they're like uncivilized, brutal savages. He basically is saying the same thing Ben Shapiro said, but he's saying it uh, in like a democratic lawyer speak way to avoid sounding that way. He doesn't want to sound like that. So he kind of coaches it. He says they're too battle minded. But we all know what battle minded means. It's the same thing that Ben Shapiro said when he's like, oh, Arabs like to live in sewage and bomb crap. 
uh, thesis. Like, it's really, it's like the build, right? It's the same exact thing. He's just wording it like more, uh, like, uh, you know, uh, like cloaked, right? Cloaked wording is what he's doing. <clears throat> but hopefully it is walls. I think that actually the thing has really turned me heavily. Already, I was already kind of thinking like the electorally, I think walls and Bashir both can have a lot of benefits that could be enough to where we don't have to risk the stuff with Shapiro. With Shapiro, the big thing is he arguably can give you Pennsylvania and it's pretty much impossible to win Pennsylvania and lose the election in my opinion. Um, and so, but the thing is he has so many scandals now that it's just kind of like, it's hard to kind of deal with all the stuff going on with the, there's like some sexual harassment case that happened with his right hand man had some weird situation where he was like really power trippy and kept mentioning the governor's name. But the only thing is that wasn't him. That was his right-hand man. But I'm pretty sure if it was your right-hand man, you probably know what's going on. Or maybe you generally know what's going on. Like, we all know, like, in the NBA, who, inf you know, who the enforcers are. Even if you don't know, like, a Bruce Bowen, like, injuring people's ankles or whatever. Uh, and a, a Lance Stevens or whoever. It's just, like, you know kind of generally who's doing what. So, even if you didn't instruct that exact thing, you probably knew about, like, kind of what the whatabouts were. But, uh, yeah, some pretty surprising stuff. Pelosi in, in favor of walls, it sounds like, kind of. And there's some reporting. And when there's media reporting, usually there's something going on behind the scenes. So pretty interesting stuff. Let me know what you think down below.